still no rain. We are desperate for some good old-fashioned rain. At least I've been able to water every couple of days to get these green things germinating. But if we're to have hope of a garden this year, we're going to need a little bit of help from Mother Nature. Look at these beautiful wild roses just growing up in the wild area here. It's amazing how they will persist and continue to grow despite all odds, even without the rain. Yet, when we try to grow things to our specifications, it's a lot more difficult to get a good success rate. There is absolutely some truth involved in the fact that a good rain will make your garden grow far more than any form of watering you could do. Why the rain makes our plants grow and thrive like nothing else is quite often considered a mystery, but there's definitely a lot of science to it. You see, rain contains nitrates, which is the most bioavailable form of nitrogen that plants can use very quickly and easily and it really helps them with their green growth and getting a good boost of nutrition that they vitally need. Most plants during their active growing season, especially when germinating, require at least one inch of water per week. Now, it is much better if this water comes in the form of a nice, slow and steady, deep watering than a series of multiple events. But if you can water your beds, Go through soaking them in real good, like I've just done on this corn here. You see there's some puddles. That's how I know I've, I've got it to the saturation point. And then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to water my beans in again that I just watered a little bit ago. I'm watering them a second time. And then I'm going to come back to the corn and water the corn again. What this does is it allows the moisture level to go through the layers of soil and gradually get down to lower layers. If you get those lower layers of soil good and moist, they're going to stay moist longer and they're going to encourage your roots to grow deeper. When your roots grow deeper, they're able to access more nutrients and more moisture when the times of drought and dry periods occur, they'll have the opportunity to absorb the moisture that's down deeper in our soil. If you do short bursts of watering here and there throughout the week, even if it adds up to an inch and you're only watering the top half inch of soil, you're going to create an environment that's going to make it so that the roots want to grow at the top of the soil surface, which is where they can become the most damaged when a dry spell occurs. It also damages them because the soil temperature is much higher at the surface on hot days. So it is a good idea to make sure that you water slow and steady, nice and deep and not short shallow bursts. Sometimes people think that that's good because at least you're getting a drink in, but it actually can cause more harm than good. I do advise that you get to know your soil very well. Is it a clay soil that hardly drains at all? Or is it sandy and the water runs right through it quickly? These are important facts to know so that you can make sure that you water appropriately. My saturation point in these clay beds is going to be far different than they are in Florida where they have sandy soils. So make sure you know what your soil can handle so that you don't end up overwatering either. A good idea to test this out is to take a sample of your soil from your garden bed and do the jar method and find out how much sand, silt, and clay you do have in your soil. This will help guide you in the perfect watering system program for your own soil health. Remember that your soil is the single most important component to a successful garden. You can remedy poor soil by adding organic matter like compost. This helps sandy soil and clay soil. So no matter which way you need to go, adding lots of great organic matter is going to help improve your soil. As much as I wish I didn't have to pull this hose around and water everything, and as much as I wish we had rain, I can say that I actually find watering to be very therapeutic and meditative. I make sure to take this time to look at the plants, look at the crops, see what's happening, see if there's any pests moving in, see what kind of weeds are starting to pop up, and determine if there is anything I need to do. So this is a perfect opportunity for you to monitor your garden for better health. So what you're seeing with this pooling water on the surface is the point that I water to, and then I let it sink in. And I do that a couple of times for a really deep watering method. 
And even though we got a tiny little sprinkle of rain this morning, it was not enough to make a bit of difference out here. It is so dry. We haven't had rain in weeks. So we are hoping and praying that we are going to get some good rains in the next coming month to help all of these plants grow beautifully. All right, I've got everything deep, deeply watered down here in the lower garden. So I'm going to head up to the raised bed garden and get some more seeds in the ground. I hope that this video has taught you a little bit more about how important watering can be and maybe a little bit more about soil structure and how it pertains to the watering schedule that you choose. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Wholesome Roots.